Okay. We're ready. All right. Okay. Ready. All right. All right. Well, then I'm going to call the meeting to order and um, I'm going to ask Councilmember Turner if he'll lead us in the pledge. I would be happy to. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And may we have the roll call. Here. Here. Present. Here. Thank you. And agenda uh, review. Mayor, if we could uh, make sure we state Marta Cruz will not be joining us this evening. For the record, let the record show that Marta Cruz is um, has an excused absence. Right. And agenda review. Who'd like to take this on? <laughs> Mayor, Council Members, uh, in, in light of the comment made uh, by, by, by Council Member Turner, there are, there are some s significant policy uh, matters on your agenda tonight. You may want to take a look at the agenda uh, and determine whether you want to continue any of those items. Um, staff's thinking, for, for instance, you may want to look at item six. Item six is a public hearing on the cannabis ordinance. Uh, it's, it's, it's really up to the council if you want to continue that or not, uh, but that, that, that may be something you may want to take a look at. Uh, in, in addition, you may also want to, uh, to consider whether to uh, c continue discussion on the budget, uh, but that you know, I would recommend you, we, you, you, you consider that at the time when we present the budget to you, uh, whether you want to continue discussion. Uh, if council does decide with respect to a public hearing matter, it's important uh, if you continue it to continue it to a date certain so that uh, uh, it, it r maintains a public hearing because we did notice the public hearing this evening. Um, as, you know, as you stated, uh, Council Member Cruz is not here tonight and you may want, want her uh, presence to, to weigh in on the important policy matters. Okay, great, thank you. What's the pleasure of the council? I, I have a comment on that. Uh, considering the, the, the nature of the topic, I would feel remiss if we didn't have every council member present who is able to vote on this topic uh, be present for it. Um, I know that it can cause sometimes issue if someone feels they missed out on an opportunity to present their argument and cast their vote, especially for something as um, highly reviewed and just very, very uh, passionate within the community. I'd like everybody to have a voice on it, if I may. I'd, I'd also, also like to mem uh, recommend that we move item number six until we have a full city council sitting here. I think we're, I believe we're required to, uh, at the, I think that the way we'll proceed is we'll go ahead and take up that item at the time, and then um, we'll most likely continue it, but we'll need to open it to public comments. Um, to anyone who has come to participate on that item, and then we can take a vote to, to continue the time. Okay, and I think I'd like to do the same thing for the budget, just in case people have come to um, comment, make comments on the budget. It's probably it'll. Pro it, well, it sounds like it will be the 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 wish of the council. We'll see it too to to make the final vote when uh, Council Member Cruz is, is back with us. So, but we'll just we'll take those up um, in order, if, unless there are any other objections. Okay. All right, so um, at this time, I'm going to open um, um, public comment. And I already lost my place here. Um, would it, let's see. Sorry, I lost my spot in the agenda. <laughs> here, thank you. So um, any person willing to speak or wishing to speak to the city council on any item not listed on the agenda may do so at this time. Members of the public have the right to speak on any items on the council agenda during that item. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the city council is not allowed to consider issues or take actions on any item not listed on the agenda. Each person wishing to, wishing to speak must go to the podium when advised by the mayor and speak directly into the microphone. 
Each speaker will be limited to three minutes unless additional time is authorized by the mayor. So is there anyone who is here for public comment? And, and, and Mayor, just, just for the record, we could yeah. do public comment first, and then uh, we could come back if we could come back to report out a closed session, conflict oh, yeah. of interest declarations, and absolutely right a, as well. Why don't we we'll go ahead and we'll take public comment, Perfect. and we'll fix my mistake in a moment. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Janice Quillacy. I live at 557 Port Circle. And I'm here to ask the city, the council, to consider creating or exploring creating a fire break behind all of our homes uh, that are on the boundary there between city limits and open space. I'm not sure if the space behind our homes uh, has, if the city has any control over a certain amount of that open space. I know five, about five years ago, uh, tractors came through and cut down all the high grass and uh, did clear it out a little bit. Nothing's been done since, so I don't know if that was the city, the property owner behind us, uh, but it is a major concern. Okay. Thank you. That's my request, to explore the creation of a fire, fire break. Vice Mayor, did you have, uh, would it be wise to send this to the um, fire subcommittee or does the staff have a recommendation for where to direct this? Uh, well, I, I, I would say just uh, in timeliness, um, uh, it might be better just going back to staff. Um, maybe, uh, David, if you can uh, give uh, the, the, the woman her, your contact information and she can call you and, and discuss that because the fire subcommittee meets like every second or third sure. month, yeah. and I'm sure your concern is now. Yes. So. Uh, Mayor, Council, I, I, if I can ask that, uh, leave her contact information, I'll definitely follow up and have a discussion with the, uh, with our, with our, our fire, um, I mean, excuse, is, uh, our fire chief, or mm -hmm. uh, chief of the fire district, uh, Jason Jenkins, in regards to the historical activities, because this, this area is within the fire district, but it's outside the city, so the city doesn't have jurisdiction, but we can certainly coordinate activities uh, in terms of addressing the, the request tonight to explore, you know, creating that fire break and what support there is from the fire district to, to uh, uh, collaborate on that effort. Great. Thank you. So you want to go ahead and get David's card? Yes. And so that you can, yeah. or just, can coordinate that or get that for okay. sale? Great. Great. Thank you. Great. You'll be hearing from us. <laughs> Great. Reese, I think you're next. Okay. I'm Reese Foxen, and I'm the library commissioner for Cloverdale. And I just kind of wanted to give you a quick update on some kind of fun and important things that are happening. At the beginning of last month, we had a visit from the Trade and Commerce Commission for the UN, and the Secretary General for that commission was part of the contingent that came, along with um, members of international library associations. And they came specifically because they heard that Sonoma County was extending Wi-Fi out into rural areas, and this is a focus for the whole world, and they wanted to know what we were doing and how we were doing it. And it was a really interesting uh, discussion. One of the things, and probably the most important, it was the most recent at that time, was we started what they call Sonoma Fi, which are Wi-Fi hotspots that you can check out from the library that are smaller than my hand. You can take them home, you can take them to New York, you can take them to Florida and use them. You can check them out for two weeks, and you can attach 15 different um, digital pieces to it, like your phones and your computers and your laptops and stuff. So that serves two purposes. Number one, it resolves a big issue here in Sonoma County, which is about a mile either side of 101, Wi-Fi becomes unstable. So rural areas have a way of getting it. And then it also satisfies that, or it begins to address that issue of um, equity. People can't afford, 25% of the people in the United States can't afford uh, any kind of internet connection. So it helps resolve that. We have 500 here in Sonoma County. At this point in time, they are all checked out. Wow. Ours, yeah, within one week, 
Uh, more than 50% of Cloverdales were checked out, and I think we had 30 or 35, and they are now all checked out, and people are waiting in line for them. So very popular. In New York, I found this out at the meeting. In New York, they have 10,000 of them in New York City, and you can check them out for a year. Wow. wow. So we're not quite there yet, but we're moving there. But they had heard about us and asked if they could come visit us. Secondly, of course, summer reading has started. And again, you know, we're all aware that it's good to keep the kids involved through the summer library because it keeps their uh, functioning levels up instead of dropping down and then having to recline. Uh, we did decide not to do Sunday hours yet. We're going to hold it off for another year because we are having trouble staffing. Even the hours that we've reopened now, we have trouble staffing it, and we're getting up there. But I think there are now 254 people working for the Sonoma County Library, so it's a lot of people, and we have more to go. So we did that. We also wanted to find out what usage would be and how the communities felt about it and some other things. The most exciting thing for me and other people is we're doing away with fines. They've been doing this at different libraries across the United States, and it's been successful. And 40,000 people can no longer use their cards because they have uh, reached the level of fines. So we're going to do away with them. We're doing away with all back fines. You do have to return your book. I mean, you know, be respectful of others. You have to check it out for three weeks, renew it, whatever. But, you know, be respectful. But at the same time, you're not going to be fined if you're a uh, day, two days, a week late. So that's kind of cool. Uh, still have to be responsible if you lose a book, but then if you find the book and return it, no fines and your fees will be refunded. So that's really neat. And in addition, all back fines are going to be eliminated. In other words, if you have fines now, they will all be gone as of July 1st. So just thought I'd kind of tell you a few things that are going on that are kind of neat with the libraries. So thank you, and thank you for appointing me. I thoroughly enjoy doing it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Reese also um, at the library on the uh, 28th of this month, there's a pop-up Veterans Resource Center uh, between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. And I, I promised a good friend of mine that I would uh, mention it. Um, it's for veterans to stop by the library. Uh, to meet with some folks, uh, to check their service uh, uh, records, and to see what uh, benefits they may be available to, that they're not getting. So hopefully we'll do that on a continuous basis at least once a quarter or so. Oh, so yeah. so yeah. thank you for that. Reese, can you go back to the mic? <laughs> for those people at home. <laughs> the, yeah, that was the Veteran Center is something they just started last month, I believe it was. Right. And I think it's wonderful because veterans so often don't know what they can really have access to. And they have all the resources right there at the library. Absolutely. Computers, everything. So that's, yeah. that's really Absolutely. good. So do check it out. I mean, things are happening faster than even I can keep track of, and I'm supposed to know what's happening. So anyway, thank you again. Thank you. Did you have any questions? No. Yeah, thank you, Reese, for all your hard work. And I have meetings at the... Um, the public libraries for the Air District, and it's always amazing. In fact, you bumped us. Um, we were supposed to have that meeting room, and you guys were in your UN meeting, so we had to go um, uh, meet in the Wine Library, which was horrible, you know. It was, but it was in Healdsburg, and um, but we ha we usually have our, our meetings at you know at um, Guerneville and Healdsburg, and sometimes Cloverdale, and it just such a huge difference in the new chairs, the new tables that are roll around, you know, you don't have to struggle with the folding tables. They have beautiful um, you know, screens that come down from the ceiling, beautiful um, uh, meeting facilities with, um, you know, the overhead projectors. And it's just, it's a pleasure to have um, a meeting there. And then you, in most of the sites, you can, you look out to the rest of the library and you just see so much activity. So the, you know, I, I can see why they came to check out, you know, what our library system is doing right. So thanks for contributing and being a part of that. And this is all due to Measure Y. This is all thank Measure you y. all for voting for it. It's, all, it's we, what made it possible. And we all said that. We said thank you, Measure Y, when we came in and we had everything in the meeting room that we needed. Mm -hmm. So thank yeah. you very much. It's, it's fantastic now. So, and I guess I should thank the voters for That's yes. right, yes. because they're the ones that have voted it for themselves. Right, right. So, right. Okay. so thank you. Would anyone else like to come forward with um, and discuss a topic that is not on this evening's agenda? 
All right, well, uh, seeing none, we're going to uh, move on to our next item, which is, pardon me? We have to do the declaration of conflict of interest and stuff. Oh, I think at least someone is watching. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, that's right. You have to go back. I like to just move forward. That's where my mind goes. So sorry about that. So I've missed a bunch of stuff on my little bulleted list. And so I believe we would like to have the report out of a closed session. We'll, and then I'm going to check them off as we go to make sure I don't mess up another item. <laughs> that's good. Uh, Mayor, the council took, uh, took a couple items in closed session uh, today's meeting. There was a uh, labor negotiation and also uh, property negotiations. No reportable action was taken. At tonight's closed session, however, staff was given direction. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, any conflict of interest declarations? Yeah, I will have to recuse myself on the cannabis issue. Okay. Madam Mayor, I will be recusing myself from the Lighting and Landscape District, item number five, zone one. Right. Thank you very much. All right. And Madam Mayor, I'll be recusing myself from, uh, I believe it's District Two, Vintage Meadows. Well, it's a good thing you're so. taking turns because I would get very lonely up here. And, All right. and, and just, just for the record, um, Councilmember Brigham will also be recusing herself. There's an item on cannabis-related uh, fees mm -hmm. that, that was separated in the, in the fees item uh, towards the end of the agenda. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Okay. And um, agenda review. I think we've... We, any other changes or deletions in addition to the myriad that have come before? Mayor Staff doesn't have any other changes or additions great. or revisions Thank to you. the agenda. Thank you very much. Okay, and since we've done public comments, we're going to see, see, I told you I needed a paper version of this of my very own that I could read. Uh, we're going to have proclamations and, uh, and presentations. Proclamation, a proclamation proclaiming June 2019 as Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month in Cloverdale. City Manager, I believe we have something to present. Mayor, I'd be happy to right. uh, read this proclamation uh, into the record. And if I could, I'd like to take the opportunity to invite uh, Mr. Jack Fitz Fitzsimmons and uh, Dobie Edmonds up to the dais, if you're here. Okay. okay. Mayor and Council, uh, I'm really pleased to read this proclamation in the record tonight. This is a City Council proclamation proclaiming June 2019 as Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month in Cloverdale. <laughs> and here I'd like to read it into the record. Whereas the month of June is designated as lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, otherwise known as LGBT Pride Month, in commemoration of the Stonewall Rebellion, which occurred during the weekend of June 27th through 29th in 1969 in New York City, giving birth to the modern LGBT civil rights movement. And whereas since 1994, the month of June has marked a time when all those committed to justice and the equality of every member of the human family joined together to celebrate the notable achievements of the millions who make up the global LGBT, LGBT community, including their valuable service to American cities, county, states, and nation. And whereas LGBT, LGBT pride is often defined as the positive stance against the discrimination violence and hatred too many still experience every day that fosters self-affirmation, dignity, visibility, and social community while encouraging the celebration of diversity, all which support the ongoing struggle for equal rights of LGBT people and their families. And whereas cities around our country, state, nation, and the globe honor LGBT Pride Month with parades, festivals, communities, community days, proclamations, and other public recognitions, which especially hi highlight the wide range of contributions that LGBT citizens, LGBT-owned businesses, and LGBT public servants make to their economies, communities, and nations. And whereas the city of Cloverdale has a diverse LGBT community, is committed to supporting the visibility, dignity, and equality for all people in the community, and whereas many residents of the Whereas many of the residents, students, city employees, and business owners within the city of Cloverdale who contribute to the enrichment of our city are part of the LGBT community. And whereas various advancements have been made with respect to the equitable treatment of lesbians, gay, men, bisexual, transgender, but there continues to be some opposition against people from around the world making it important for cities like Cloverdale to stand up and show support for our residents who are affected. And whereas June has become a symbolic month in which lesbian women, gay men, bisexual people, transgender people, 
and supporters come, to be, come together in various celebrations of pride. And whereas several cities across the United States recognize and celebrate June as LGBT Pride Month, and in Cloverdale, the CPAC, right here where we're standing, will hold an inaugural Pride event as he joined others around the country during National Pride Month and herald the 50th anniversary of New York City's Stonewall Uprising. And now, therefore, be it resolved that our mayor, Mayor Mel Melanie Bagney, mayor of the city of Cloverdale, does hereby proclaim on the behalf of Cloverdale City Council, June 2019, as Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month in Cloverdale, and urge all of our citizens to join together in ending prejudice everywhere it may exist to respect the rights of all people and to celebrate the diversity and resulting cultural richness of our city. On behalf of the mayor. This placard will be in the lobby on June 23rd for our inaugural Pride event, and we hope that city council members and our honorable mayor can attend. I know you can, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jack, you want to say a little bit about what is going to happen on the 23rd here at CPAC? Yes, and I neglected to say I'm Jack Fitzsimmons. I'm a resident and business owner in Cloverdale. I live at 431 Sonoma Drive in Cloverdale, California. Um, just thought it was obligatory. Um, CPAC is putting on an event that basically looks at LGBT life in Sonoma County. The first program is a youth advocate, a gay parent, and a gay senior who are going to explain what life is like for them. The second is going to be the walks of our life. We have a number of LGBTQI professionals and nonprofit ministers uh, speaking about this. After that program, we are also going to have a celebration of life on our patio and on our lobby. We'll be serving wine made by our community members and some very uh, lovely food. So we hope you can all attend it. It is from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock on June 23rd. Thank you. I would like to just thank Jack uh, for all of the hard work on this one. This is a, a lengthy project, and he's been working on it for months and um, in, on his own time, totally volunteer. Thank you so much, Jack. I appreciate it. I also want to extend my gratitude for something that can be so frightening for even the youth still today to come out to their friends and family and share that they may be an LGBTQ uh, Q member. I think it's fantastic that we continue to bring normality to this subject and let people know that Cloverdale supports it and uh, that you will not be discriminated here. So thank you. I'd just like to uh, yeah, thank and acknowledge Jack and everyone who's working on this project. It's a long time coming. And um, I know, unfortunately, I'll, I already have a commitment and I'll be out of town, but I look forward to coming to uh, subsequent events in years to come. So thanks, Jack. All right. Anyone else from the public would like to make a, a comment? Okay. All right. Seeing none, I think we'll go ahead and uh, we'll move on to the consent calendar. All items under consent calendar will be considered together by one action of the city of council unless any council member or member of the public requests that an item be removed and considered separately. Nope, I'd like to move approval. Right. May I have a second? I'll second that, Mayor. Okay. And a roll call, please. Council Member Turner? Yes. Council Member Brigham? Aye. Vice Mayor Walter? Aye. And Mayor Bay? Aye. All right, are there Thanks. Any communications? And I'm not seeing any this evening. Anyone, anyone adding anything? Okay. And we were going to move on to public hearings. Cloverdale Landscaping and Lighting Assessment District public hearing for the approval of the annual engineer's report and resolutions authorizing assessments for fiscal year 2019 through 20. Good, good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, just quick background. I'll turn over to Mr. Paul Wade, who's the engineer of work for this uh, for this effort. 
Um, on, on February 27th of this year, the City Council began the annual proceedings for the fiscal year 2019-20 uh, year in, by appointing Coastal and Civil Engineering as the engineer of work. Uh, here tonight on behalf of Coastal and Engineering is, is Mr. Paul Wade. Uh, the engineer's report was was prepared and filed uh, in accordance with the Landscape and Lighting Act and was presented to the council uh, on May 8th. Uh, during the intervening time, uh, city staff did conduct a, a public workshop. We're not required to, but we did to receive input from the residents with the Landscape and Lighting District. And that, that input is reflected in the, uh, the, the engineer's report. Uh, as well as the respective budgets for the, um, the, the specific zones within the l and um, at, at your May 8th meeting, the, the City Council preliminary approved the uh, engineer's report and adopted resolutions of intent and set the public hearing date that we're here tonight, uh, which allows for members of the community to protest. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to, to Mr. Wade just to give you, uh, a, again, a brief summary of engineering report and then recommend that you open up the, the public hearing for input on the engineer's report. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Welcome back, Paul. It's good to be back. <laughs> Paul Wade, I'm with Coastal and Civil Engineering. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, the City of Cloverdale's Landscape and Lighting Assessment District was initially formed in 1997 with the Jefferson Springs development. Other subdivisions were annexed over time, and there are now seven zones. The last one annexed was Sunrise Hills in 2005-2006. As the city manager is explaining, the, in accordance with the Landscape and Lighting Act, um, the city must undertake certain annual proceedings each year in order to levy assessments for the upcoming fiscal year, and these are proceedings typically require three council meetings. Um, February 27th uh, this year, the council initiated the proceedings by appointing Coastlands uh, as the engineer of work to prepare the annual engineer's report. On May 8th, the council adopted resolutions of intent to levy and collect assessments and set the date of the public hearing for June 12th. And tonight, the council conducts the public hearing and may then adopt resolutions authorizing the levying of the assessments for the upcoming fiscal year. A copy of the preliminary engineer's report for fiscal year 2019-20 is attached to the staff report. It includes line item budgets for each zone and also has last year's, actually the current year's budgets are listed there for comparison. Um, you should have a copy of a blue and yellow spreadsheet that summarizes some of the information in the, in the report. Um, the um, budget spreadsheet shows the proposed budget for each zone and the percentage changes from the current year budgets. Uh, all of the, the zone budgets are proposed to be increased except for Zone 1, Jefferson Springs. Um, zones 2, uh, Vintage Meadows, and Zone 7, Sunrise Hills have substantial budget increases because of uh, proposed improvements in those zones. Assessment increases are proposed for five of the seven zones, um, and for zones four, five, and six, the proposed assessments are at the maximum allowed without balloting the homeowners. Uh, you can see on the budget review worksheet the amount of the current assessments, the proposed assessments, and the amount of the increases. And specifically, for zone one, Jefferson Springs, there is no change. Zone two, Vintage Meadows, there's a proposed increase of $121.12. Zone three, the cottages, no change. Zone four, the vineyards, an increase of $95.50. Zone five, Ioli Ranch, an increase of $6.48. Zone six, Brookside Terrace, an increase of $28.32. And zone seven, Sunrise Hills, an increase of $100.80. Um, a little bit about reserves. In 2011, the City Council established a policy of trying to maintain a minimum fund balance reserve of 25% of operating expenses for each zone. The last three columns in that budget review spreadsheet show the projected beginning uh, reserve balances at the end of this fiscal year, projected reserve balances at the end of fiscal year 2019-20, and those reserves as percentages of each zone's operating budgets. So notably, zones four, five, and six are projected to end next year, um, next fiscal year, with reserves below the 25% target. And in fact, zones five and six are projected to have zero reserves. 
Um, general fund contributions to zones two, five, and six all have general fund contributions for five and six. Those are relatively minor amounts. And, and in zone two, there's a general fund contribution of $13,709, and that is to fund the general benefit uh, portion of the vintage meadow uh, maintenance cost that it confers on the community at large. And there's an analysis and discussion of the general versus special benefits in part D of the report. Um, note all three of those zones are likely to con uh, require continuing ongoing general funding in future years. Each of the zones has a built-in inflation adjustment to the maximum allowed assessment based on the consumer price index for the preceding year. And this year that um, adjustment is 4.5% and those adjustments are shown at the bottom of each budget sheet in the report. There's three resolutions for your consideration to account for potential conflicts of interest. Zone one, Jefferson Springs is on one resolution. Zone two, Vintage Meadows is on another. And then zones three through seven on the final one. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Any, any um, technical questions from council right now? Okay. Uh, so um, what's the, the, the best way forward on this? Should we just go ahead and take public comment? Mm -hmm. Um, on the topic in general, and then we'll split it up by um, each of the ordinances so that the council members can re recuse themselves, okay? Mayor, that's a, that's a good approach. I'd recommend okay. you go ahead and open the public hearing at this great. point. Great, great. So, yeah, so this time I'll um, open the, the public hearing. Would anyone like to come forward and speak on this item? Now's your chance. Okay. Well, seeing none, I think we'll uh, move on to bring it back to the council and we'll move on to uh, deliberating each item. I believe that it's time uh, residents are going to need to recuse themselves for the discussion. So, Madam Mayor, I'd like to recuse myself uh, for the next couple of minutes while you discuss zone one. Okay. Paul, did you have anything special for us on zone one? Okay. Any comments or questions? Yeah. What's no, go ahead. I, I just have I just have one. Do you mind offering just a, a high level opinion on zone one, how the reserve ended up getting upwards of sixty percent? Did they avoid or this might be even a question for David, did they avoid some expenses they had otherwise anticipated or it just seems a little lopsided compared to the rest? Which is not a bad thing. Having money in the reserve is good, don't get me wrong, but I just don't know if it's uh, for right now or for always. Hi. Uh, so I have a fair amount of history with this uh, assessment district, and when I started doing the annual reports, all of the zones had substantial reserves. Um, I, I, I don't know why, but they relied on the reserves for many years without increasing the assessments. And then those reserves draw, were drawn down over time, and then we started increasing the assessments to try and build up the reserves. Um, zone one has still some of that older remaining uh, reserve. That it, it is be, being drawn down, but it's it's just a- At a lesser rate. Yeah, it's a historic anomaly. Okay, thank you, that helps. So Hector is here if you had any, you know, to, if you wanted to get some additional background. You see anything big coming up with Zone 1, Hector? Come on down, Hector. I'm sure he's safe. I'm sure he can make a thing. Madam Mayor, City Council members and staff. Uh, there's, there's a few things that we uh, have planned for, vintage, uh, for Jefferson Springs. One of the reasons why the the assessment is a little high is because uh, uh, the trees that we first planted here about eight years ago are pretty much what you consider established, so they require less watering and less maintenance. Uh, another reason why some of, in some of these districts, just to add to what Paul was saying, originally the assessments, they were running on the reserves because the landscape wasn't mature. It was small. So like anything else, as things grow, uh, it requires more maintenance. As you know, the infrastructure gets older, it needs to be replaced. And that's what I see out, out, on the, out on the field. 
but there is uh, uh, there is some creek maintenance that we, we have planned for Jefferson Springs, and a few uh, the road maintenance. I know the road needs some some. So there's some some uh, projects coming. Cool, Jefferson Springs. Thank you. Is, is, I just have one more question for him, and then I'll go to you. So is some of is any of that having to do with any of the uh, effects of the the rains from the past winter? No. Or is it just it just it's regular just regular maintenance wear okay. and tear. So Susie had a comment. Yeah, I also just wanted to point out that 25% of their of their budget is 4,355. Their reserve is 10,000. So $6,000 makes up that hmm. that difference between 25 and 60%. So it's it's because their expenses are low, lower. one of the lower. Mm -hmm. I just want to point that out. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Hector. Don't go far. <laughs> So any other questions or comments on this mm -hmm. item? Well, then if someone would like to um, remove the yeah. item. I'll offer you a resolution there in title only, City of Cloverdale City Council, resolution number 39-2019, a resolution approving the annual engineer's report, confirming the assessment diagram and the annual assessment amounts, and authorizing the levying and collection of assessments for fiscal year 2019-20 for the Cloverdale Landscaping and Lighting Assessment District for Zone 1 pursuant to the Lighting and Landscape Act of 1972. I'll second that. All right. Roll call. Okay, Council Member uh, Aye. Council Member Turner? Yes. Walter? Recused. Okay. And Aye. Great, thank you. All right, so we're moving on to the next item. That is zone two, and who is recusing? Madam Mayor, I'll be uh, recusing myself, and I will fetch uh, Vice Mayor Walter. There you go. Heard us and is on his way. There you go. And Mayor, just, just for the record, I believe uh, Council Member Turner does not live within that zone, but lives within the 500 feet of that zone. So in abundance of caution, uh, he is recusing himself. Okay. So regarding um, Vintage Meadows, I'm sure that there will be some discussion about that. Would the Vice Mayor like to um, lead it off? <laughs> um, I don't have any discussion on that. Really? Big numbers usually affect you that way. I'm surprised. No. Okay. Right. <laughs> Moving on. Do you have any uh, comments or questions? Yeah. I, I wanted to clarify the general fund contribution of 13700 That's um, for the park. I'm assuming. It's for the restroom. It's for the restroom. I figured it was. Yeah. So that's not, I don't want people to get the wrong impression that we're dumping general fund money into mm -hmm. all of the zoning districts. In this case, it's for um, the whole community. Great. Great. Okay. That's all I I'm have. I'm good, ma'am. Great. No, thank you for asking the questions. I think it's important to clarify <laughs> that. So would, it, would, it, would um, someone like to recommend the resolution? I'll offer it. Um, City of Cloverdale, City Council Resolution Number 40, 2019, a resolution approving the annual engineer's report, confirming the assessment diagram and the annual assessment amounts, and authorizing the levying and collection of assessments for fiscal year 2019-20 for the Cloverdale Landscaping and Lighting Assessment District for Zone 2, pursuant to the Landscaping and Lighting Act of 1972. I'll second, Madam Mayor. Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 So Council, Jason back. Uh, Council Member Turner is recused, so let me grab him. And can we all be here for this one? Okay. Right, regarding the, uh, the final resolution, any uh, comments or questions about three, four, five, six, and seven? Let me see here. No, Madam Mayor. Do, do you mind offering a little bit of comment on whether we have a, a strategy put in place to get some of the reserve balances away from zero? Good point. Actually, is that a good question for our finance director? Or is, is that something you want to take on the city manager? Uh, I can't say that there's a strategy. Uh, what I can say is that you know every year we're going to prepare an engineering report and look at the, the cost to operate and maintain the, the landscape and lighting districts. Obviously, uh, one of the things we, we strive to do is keep costs 
uh, down as much as we can uh, with with the demands of the residents and, and the need of to to do the, the, the maintenance and operation of that district. Uh, so uh, one, one tactic is to just minimize costs and keep costs down. Uh, obviously, in a general inflationary environment where everything we do, whether it's water, uh, whether it's you know, switching to organic herbicides and staff, those all are costs that were, are, are increasing in the, and those are reflected in the, in the L&L budgets. But we're now at a point where uh, we, we are maxi more maxing the assessments and we're contributing general fund. Um, if you continue that trend, uh, really the only way to build back reserves is to uh, re reduce expenses below what your anticipated revenue is. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, we are in an environment where we are going to uh, continually uh, require general fund infusion uh, in, in, into those those, uh, those those particular districts. But I see Paul's coming to the dais and he may <laughs> offer some additional If, if I might, uh, th those zones four, five, and six, they're, they're at the maximum allowable assessments with the with the inflation adjustment. So to uh, increase those assessments beyond that, you have to ballot all the property owners. That is a possible strategy to try and, and build those up. But you have to balance that against whether or not you think those are likely to pass okay. and are worth the effort. So that, that does lead me to one more question and the realization. I'm going to look into this a little further as the year progresses. But is there an opportunity for us as a council to assign money within the budget to give these a shot in the arm to get the reserves up to maybe the 25 percent and then continue to operate as, as we are now? Or is that something that we as a council can decide on? Uh, that's something I, I would want to have our city attorney take a look at whether you'd want to infuse additional general fund revenue into the L&Ls to kind of boost up their reserves. Uh, I mean, generally, it, it's going to be the case where you're going to do that in, on, a, on an annual basis uh, like we're doing here. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not sure that it's, it's beneficial necessarily to just tr make a transfer into those funds okay. or into those districts. Uh, for that money just to basically kind of artificially uh, uh, increase the, the reserve balances. Thank you, David. I realize those are loaded questions, and I appreciate your answers. Thank you. And, and just a quick comment. Um, as the city manager pointed out, as far as money and, and, and money that's not allocated, the only money that wouldn't be allocated is, is from the general fund. Um, so that, that is, uh, you said it correctly, uh, David. So the, the always the, the thought of um, boosting kind of the, the reserves, a lot of times it's also looking at, the, at what services are provided. A lot of times when, when there's set fees and only set adjustments, which usually a kind of a, from an index, um, a consumer price index increase, um, you, you're looking at the services and making modifications to the services provided in order to lower the cost in order to kind of balance that, balance that out because if you have a structural kind of a deficit, you will always need to be, as, as the city manager pointed out, will always be needed boosting that reserve on a yearly basis. Okay. That, that does help give me some context as well. Thank you. I'm good, Madam Mayor. Thank you. No, I'm good. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to offer a resolution by title only, City of Cloverdale City Council Resolution Number 41-2019. A resolution approving the annual engineer's report, confirming the assessment diagram and the annual uh, assessment amounts, and authorizing the levying and collection of assessments for fiscal year 2019-20 for the Cloverdale Landscape and Lighting Assessment District for Zones 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, pursuant to the Landscaping and Lighting Act of 1972. I'll second. Okay. Yes. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. So moving on to item six. I'll have to recuse myself. Cannabis land use ordinance amendment to increase the number of allowed cannabis dispensaries from two to three, add provisions related to temporary cannabis event permits, expand sections related to setbacks and waivers, and make modifications due to changes in law and other minor, minor amendments. City Manager, did you have anything for us? 
Sure, Mayor. Uh, the, the, the introduction or the ordinance that's uh, in the packet tonight is, is a culmination of a fairly significant review uh, by the City Council uh, of draft amendments to the originally adopted cannabis ordinance. Uh, after, I think, a number of reviews and input by Council, the, the, the ordinance, the, the draft amended ordinance was, was referred to the, the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission has since conducted a public hearing, reviewed the ordinance, and uh, what you see in your packet today is, is, a, is a product of their recommendation to support approval of the ordinance in its current form. Uh, tonight, our proposal is to introduce the, the ordinance uh, and uh, uh, conduct first reading um, by title, you know, and by title only, you know, waive reading of the text of the ordinance. Um, and if you, if you conduct a public hearing, we would then bring it back for um, uh, a second reading. Uh, more than likely, that would occur on the consent agenda uh, at, at your next meeting. Uh, as we indicated earlier, we, we do know uh, that uh, Councilmember Cruz uh, is, is absent tonight, um, and it, it would be at the Council's discretion whether you want to uh, provide Council Member Cruz the opportunity to weigh in on it, uh, weigh in on the ordinance, uh, and if so, the recommendation would be that you continue the public hearing tonight to a date certain. Uh, but that's that's Council's discretion uh, whether you want to decide to continue the public hearing tonight. Um, Madam Madam Mayor, I'd like to uh, make the recommendation that we um, uh, continue this item uh, until a, a date certain. When Council Member Cruz, and we'll have a full city council here as well. I agree. I agree with Vice Mayor Walter. Well, I'll still need to um, open public comment just in case anyone is here to uh, comment on uh, this item. So, and then I'll bring it back to Council to set that date. Uh, would anyone from the public like to come forward and speak on agenda item number six? All right, well, seeing none, I will bring it back to the council. And so what we'll need to do is um, set a meeting date. And um, I'm going to pull out my calendar and make sure that I don't have a, a, a League of Cities meeting or some, else, uh, some other conflict that I am not conscious of right now. Uh, are we doing a special meeting or are we doing the next well, council meeting? Well, the, the public hearing could be continued on, on either the next meeting, which is um, June 26th, and I believe that Council Member Cruz will be back on June 20th, or we could continue it until uh, July 24th, and it's because the, the first meeting in July has been canceled. So does anyone have an issue, or does anyone have a, do you have a preference for the 26th or for July 24th? The 24th isn't going to work for me. Okay. Are, I, are you out by then? I have surgery the very okay. next day. So it looks looks like, uh, Jason, unless, do you have a problem with um, June 24th? June 26th, Wednesday works. Uh, work, so, works. June, oh, sorry. I'm on the wrong month again. June 26th. Yeah, that, that okay. works well for me. Okay. Um, yeah. Happy to discuss it at that meeting and uh, hope to see whoever wants to make sure they're heard on the subject here as well. Okay. So we and, have, and sounds staff, like we have June 26th. The staff recommends that you... Uh, but by motion, uh, continue the public hearing to the, to the date that you, you collaborated on? Madam Mayor, if I may be so bold, I'd like to offer a motion that we continue item number six on the cannabis ordinance to our next scheduled meeting, Wednesday, June the 26th. I'll second that. All right. And may we have a roll call, Sue? We will continue the public, item, the public hearing until May 26th. Aye. 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 Great, thank you. All right. Did someone like to retrieve Councilmember Brigham? <laughs> and does she need to continue to recuse herself on the entirety of Item Seven? Um, uh, no. The the fees. The rest of the the fees. I think. Could be discussed when we come her. to that. Section. It would just be that that one portion, okay. which the resolutions are, are divided that way are. as well. Great. Okay, great. Welcome back to this. May the record reflect that uh, Councilmember Brigham has joined us again, and we're going to move on to item seven. Mayor, for this item, I'll turn it over to our finance director, Susie Holmes. Thank you, David. 
Uh, Madam Mayor, tonight um, for your consideration and possible adoption is the master fee schedule, which includes all charges for services. The city has maintained a policy of recovering costs for providing miscellaneous city services. The process consists of a staff audit of the time spent in any charges or any other charges for each service. At this point, staff is not aware of any cost of living allowances and therefore is not suggesting any change to any of the current charges. What we have, what staff has identified is several charges that we need to add to the master fee schedule. There's four of them and staff's recommending that we include a tree permit fee which is related to the tree preservation ordinance which was recently adopted and that's $125. We're also um, suggesting an annual encroachment permit fee, which would offer a discounted rate to those that regularly apply for multiple encroachment permits per year. A capital improvement fee related to the airport leases. Um, this is a $50 monthly charge that would be set aside and used for capital improvements at the airport and also a commercial delivery service permit application deposit and annual fee. And all, all the other cannabis fees were adopted last year, um, but the delivery was unknown at the time. So the app, the I'm app supposed to be sitting so, here. So can we discuss the cannabis uh, fees after the-, the Yes, uh, we can, customer? sorry. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so those are the three for this section. Mm -hmm. This section, yeah. Okay. Madam Mayor, um, may I? Yeah, certainly. Uh, Susie, could you um, uh, share with us the annual encroachment fee? I I'm not. That's not popping out on me. Here. The annual encroachment. You want to know where it is in the, like the page, please page table? Mm -hmm. It is. I just want to make sure that we have that the way. <clears throat> it's on. Council Member. Turner wanted it. It's on page 220 if you're looking at your iPad. Mm -hmm. okay. And it is about halfway down the page. And you'll see that there's an annual and then an additional inspection fee. I'm, 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 am I overstepping here? I'm happy to give some nope, details nope, since okay. it's in front of me here. So the annual encroachment permit will be a $470. And that will cover the year. And each subsequent job that needs to be reviewed by city staff will be a $50 fee thereafter. Okay, so on that one fee, they'll be able to encroach as much as they want? The way I understand it, and I, I welcome clarification, is um, for the first job in which an encroachment fee or an encroachment permit is required, the first one for that uh, annual or fiscal year will be $470. Each subsequent permit that's needed for that same fiscal year will be an additional $50. This is a difference from what it was before in which $470 was collected at the necessity of each permit, regardless of the time frame. Okay. That's correct. Well, wait a minute, it's really not okay. I, I was under the impression that for the first fee, it was gonna include so many encroachments. One. One encroachment for $400. Um, and then after that, it's 50 apiece. I, I thought when we initially started discussing this that it was going to be, the first encroachment was going to be 400 and some odd dollars, but it was going to allow them to do four uh, encroachments with the city. Am, mm -hmm. am I not understanding that properly? I didn't understand that. I don't remember that. No. Uh, Vice Mayor Walter, all, all I can comment right now on that is that it has not come up in those details during our uh, public works subcommittee meetings. Um, but I cannot speak to the history of this topic that came before me. I can. Yeah. I um, remember this. <laughs> yeah, this came up because um, especially uh, tree services in town um, had to pay like 400 and, what was it, $75 per permit, per encroachment permit for every single job. And so they would have to charge the 475 because that's what it was costing them to get the permit, and then they would be charging resident, you know, another two to 10,000. So what was happening was that there were a lot of people that 
especially in Del Webb and, uh, and other communities, a lot of people just want one tree trimmed. And it would take them 15 minutes, but to get that one tree trimmed cost them 400 and 500, 600 bucks. So a lot of that stuff wasn't being done just because of the cost. So I, I brought it up a long time ago that I thought it was be appropriate to have one fee and then um, they could have multiple um, permits then to do this, especially if they're only going to just prune a tree that took 10 minutes. And it made sense. I didn't, I was done with this and then it got handed off because I'm not on that committee anymore. Uh, but I was a little startled myself to see the $50, but I sort of get it. It's like somebody from the city has to do a drive-by, right? Yeah. And, and uh, so you've got to cover at least what it costs. But i got to tell you, the tree guys in town are very happy with this concept. And we did, uh, thank you for that clarification on the history. I can offer a little bit more as, of what's happened since I've, uh, along with uh, your, my, the vice chair on that subcommittee, I believe, uh, vice mayor. But... Um, Staff did mention that, and, and I believe this to be the case with the $50 as well, David, so I'm, I'm going to look to you here just a little bit. If the jobs are close together, even with the $50 uh, additional thereafter, if the jobs are in close proximity, I'm, I'm led to believe multiple jobs can be covered under one, even at the rate of $50. Uh, am I understanding that correctly as it's written currently? Yeah, the, the, uh, the master fee schedule doesn't provide that level of detail. Uh, it, it really, I think, in terms of how the permit would work, as uh, you, you take a tree services example that Councilmember Brigham provided, uh, a, 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 an arborist would apply for an annual permit, would uh, pay the $470. They would be then, uh, assuming they met all the permit conditions, be granted an annual permit. For each then respective job that they fill or perform, there would be uh, an, an additional $50, $50 charge. Now, there could be, it could be dependent on, uh, it, you know, if at the time of application they know that they're going to do a certain number of jobs, pay for it at that time, or just pay for it at, on an ongoing basis. So as those uh, particular jobs are performed, uh, they would apply for those additional, they would, they would notif there would be a notification to our public works department and then the $50 would be charged in order to uh, cover staff's time to conduct the inspection. If there was a determination made that, for example, uh, two adjoining properties were kind of undergoing uh, some tree maintenance work that required the encroachment permit, uh, the public works staff could make a determination that the, the inspection could be conducted really in, in, in you know, one, one inspection. Uh, and then just charge the one fee. Now, if uh, the uh, under that same annual permit, if if the applicant then had, you know multiple inspections on different parts of the town and different hours of the day, uh, they may charge that respective fifty dollars for each of those two projects. So, you know, there's a little bit of discretion there, uh, and you know, I think as you as you indicated, Councilmember Turner, if those activities were you know kind of right next to each other or involved the same level of staff time then certainly I think staff would just charge the $50. Remember, really, these fees are just intended to be cost recovery. So it's, that's really what it's uh, intended to do. Uh, and so, the, so there is an evaluation on the nature of those individual inspections um, and, you know, the, both the timing and the location. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, th I, I think, you know, the staff always tries to be respectful with what we bill our residents. Uh, and, you know, again, if, if it was really close and those inspections were being done kind of in one fell swoop, you know, we're not going to double, we're not going to double charge. Uh, uh, you know, again, there is a certain level of, of there can be a certain level of complexity uh, in this type of work. Uh, you, you can imagine if it's, if it's, example, just simply doing some tree maintenance in the public right away, first, let's say, removing a very large uh, redwood tree, for example. Uh, where you have uh, uh, to shut down the public right of way, do a traffic control plan, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of time that might be involved in that effort could be 
fairly significant, but the idea being that they, they're kind of going to balance out a little bit. And so the, the, the really <coughs> goal here with the, with, the, with the master fee schedule is just really to, be, to, to cost recover uh, the time that is necessary for staff to perform the inspection. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a question. Sure. Actually, I got asked this question, and I could not answer it. What, um, what kind of arrangement does PG&E, Comcast, um, all the rest of those guys that just sort of pull up, park, and block my driveway or other people's driveway and, or just park on the street, um, what kind of a deal do they have with the city? I, I said I don't know, but I would find out. The, the utilities do not have really any uh, deal, so to speak, with the city. Uh, they are required, like other entities, to apply for and obtain a, an encroachment permit for any work within the right of way. Um, if they park in front of your driveway, uh, you know, my, my recommendation would be uh, call our police department, and you know, our police department could obviously come out and ask. So them every to, time that Comcast pulls the truck over, they actually come to the city and ask for an encroachment permit. I, I can't. I can't validate that they they do it every time, uh, uh, but the, the requirement is if. For, for any of the uh, public utilities, if they perform work in the right-of-way, uh, they are required uh, under the municipal code to attain an encroachment permit. Um, they would be able to take advantage of the encroachment, the annual encroachment permit. Mm -hmm. So if pg e was to foresee that they had a significant amount of work to do within the city, uh, apply for an annual encroachment permit. Uh, and again, that's where it gets tricky because certain follow-up inspections yeah. could be fairly significantly involved, um, if particularly where they are doing work on, on a gas line, for example. They've done that where uh, we, it required a full-time inspector uh, overseeing the work, uh, you know, basically eight, eight hours a day for uh, several days at a time. Um, in that case, we asked, we, we asked for an estimate of the, the hours that it was going to take to perform the work, and that they, they uh, pay the cost associated with having in, an inspector present during while all that work is being performed. That's kind of, I just wanted to clear that up just so I know I'm not voting on something. I really want to give these small business guys a break, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, I don't want to see us um, have like PG&E, Comcast, those guys. Um, just feel like they could get one of those permits too, because it's a whole other ball game. I don't uh, know. It's yeah. an interesting thought. I was just asked that before I came here tonight, and and, so I was. It kind of threw me a little bit. Right. You know, it, it, and, and, and staff definitely considered that. Um, you know, we, we can't really treat applicants differently. So no, they, I know. If so. if uh, PG&E or Comcast or any of the other utilities wanted to apply for an annual encroachment permit, they certainly can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, now it, it's going to be staff's going to have to look at that application carefully and, and understand what what level of work is involved. And um, remember, these fees are minimum fees. Okay. Uh, and you know, it'd be our intent to charge what what's the minimum fee. Uh, but if if it's clear that the uh, work is such that it's going to be more involved, uh, that's where we can we can charge use. Uh, again, the, the, the rate, but um, charge a higher fee for the work that's going to be necessary to, to ensure that our right-of-way is protected. I kind of thought that, that. I just wanted everybody to be clear on that, that we're not giving away the farm here, that this is and, just and, the minimum. And I may have misspoke to say, you know, you should call your the police department first. I mean, <laughs> maybe the best thing to do would be to call our engineering department and ask whether the entity has an, an encroachment yeah. permit, <laughs> uh, and, and then if they don't, then then it could become, uh, you know, a, a police matter. I, I guess I, I say it could be a police matter because if you know it's a matter of life safety that someone has access to their driveway, um, you know, the police department is going to be be able to get quick action typically to get a vehicle moved. <laughs> okay, I'm happy. Great, thank you. And that was the, the spirit which um, it came to us, I believe, originally last year, is, is that there are so many um, residential jobs where it's just one or two trees, and it, it really does become cross it, They have to pass that, that cost on to, um, to the residents, and this is just an efficient 
um, way of making sure we're keeping tabs on them and doing the inspection, but it's not, um, it's not excessive. Fee is not excessive, so. Is there any other concern about uh, tree permit fees? Okay. <laughs> any other uh, uh, items of uh, concern or any, any further questions? Nope. Okay. All right. I'm, that's the next, that's the, so it, it, it's any, would any member of the public like to come forward and, um, and comment on this item at this time? Tree lovers, tree haters, everyone's welcome. <laughs> okay. Well, in that case, I'll uh, bring it back to the council. Is there any uh, further deliberation? No, ma'am. Okay. And, and Mayor, I just uh, recommend that uh, at this point, if you test, no more public testimony, that you close the we'll public hearing. We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and close the uh, the, the um, public hearing on this portion and bring it back to the council. Would anyone like to uh, recommend the item? We do have a resolution before us. I'll offer the resolution. City of Cloverdale, City Council Resolution Number 42, 2019, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Cloverdale, establishing and updating the schedule of fees and charges for city services and repealing previously adopted and conflicting fees and charges for such services. I second. Aye. 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 All right, now we are moving on. Now the second resolution. Yeah, and good. Good. I have to recuse myself. Okay. And Mayor, at this point, I recommend you, you, you may want to um, uh, open back up the public hearing in case there's any uh, public comment on, on that specific resolution. Certainly. And, and just for the, for the record, on, the, on, on agenda item six and on this item, uh, Council Member Brigham is recusing herself due to business interests with uh, the cannabis industry. Okay. And I'm on the wrong section, so. All right, does, any, does anyone have, did you, did you want to go ahead and review uh, this item, Susie? Sure, I can. I can fit. <laughs> so there's two fees that we're um, trying to include in our master fee schedule. One is an application deposit, which is consistent with all of the other commercial cannabis deposits um, that we have in the city. And then um, the annual fee is um, $10,044 or some, somewhere right there. 6,600 of that is an outside service to come in and do compliance and financial audits. And 3,450 is for staff time to process the application. Okay, any, any questions for staff before I open it up to public comment? All right, all right. So um, in, in, would anyone like to come forward and uh, comment on this item? I'm opening up public the public hearing. All right, well seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the council. Uh, any deliberations on this item? Madam Mayor, I'd like to go ahead and offer the resolution by title only. Am I getting oh, ahead? Yeah. <laughs> Second, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Right, come in. And we have the vote, please. Council Member Turner? Yes. Vice Mayor Walter? Aye. Aye. And Mayor Bailey? Aye. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Right. And can we have um, yep. Council Member back? Mm -hmm. All right. No, I'm Did you get her? <laughs> Great, thank you. All right, 
we're going to move on to new business and item number eight, consideration of possible action to approve the budget for fiscal year 2019-2020. We've got the city manager. Mayor, I'd like to, to uh, turn over to Finance Director Susie Holmes, who's going to initiate the presentation tonight on the budget. Okay. Thank you again. I'm Susie Holmes, the Finance Director for the City, and tonight staff is presenting the fiscal year 2019-20 budget. And I'm just going to start by sharing the process for how we created the budget. First, on March 14th, City Council and staff held an annual City Council goal-setting meeting where Council and staff identified key goals, priorities um, for the upcoming year. Staff took those priorities and incorporated them into the departmental budgets that are being presented tonight. Second, the finance team met with the department heads throughout the spring months and reviewed departmental funding requests for key priorities, projects, and activities covering the general fund, impact fees, affordable housing, bond proceeds, and the enterprise funds, which consist of streets, storm drains, sewer, water, and airport. I'd like to note that for transparency reasons, this year the budget has included um, budget worksheets for impact fees and bond proceeds. Third, the finance team input the information from the spring meetings and prepared a preliminary draft budget, which was presented to the council on May 15th. Um, at, the, at that workshop, staff provided an in-depth review of the fiscal year budget and council provided feedback on certain discretionary items, including the replacement of the engineering annex building which Assistant City Manager Kevin Thompson is going to discuss in more detail. And also the aug staff augmentation, which will be covered by City Manager David Kelly. And at this point, I'd like to hand off the presentation to Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Susie, for that introduction and that overview of the budget process. Um, a couple of notes, that, things that I'd like to identify about your budget. Um, it, it, as Susie indicated, uh, it, it covers not only the general fund, but your enterprise funds, as well as affordable housing, bond proceeds, and impact fees. And in that way, the budget really is a comprehensive financial document covering all the budgets, the collection of budgets for the city. Um, but with that said, I did want to note that there, there are certain items that are you know, currently in process or are being evaluated. Uh, one example is, is we're currently in the process of labor negotiations. The budget does not reflect the outcome of that labor negotiation process. That's a very important process that we go through as part of uh, looking at employee memorandums of understanding that, that cover and provide for uh, uh, you know, basically uh, operating our uh, uh, staff and organizations. Uh, so cost of living adjustments is something that you will want to think about as you, as you evaluate and consider the budget. Uh, in addition, as uh, the finance director mentioned, uh, council provided a direction of feedback on the potential improvement of the Cloverdale Performing Arts Center, or CPAC. Uh, this budget does not include the cost of the range of alternative for, for the potential improvements. Um, and that's something that, that again, Kevin's going to kind of touch on here briefly. In addition, uh, there are a number of projects that staff is currently working on uh, and has not come to a point where we're able to identify uh, the specific costs of undertaking some of the work efforts that I think are important to council. Uh, one of those special projects includes the removal of consideration of the removal of, of rubber mulch at some of our city parks. Uh, that's something that's in, uh, an ongoing work program. We anticipate bringing forward for further council consideration. Uh, and we're in the process of identifying the, the uh, or putting together cost estimates to do that work. And that's something we need to bring back to council one to get your, get your approval to do it and, 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 and the program for undertaking it, but also what is the costs associated with that work. Um, and so that's something we're still in process uh, and we're, we weren't ready to bring forward as part of this budget. So that's something that we will, we will bring forward um, at, a, at a later date. Uh, kind of related to special projects, we're also in discussions about um, the, the potential addition of a, of a dog park. And we know that there would be some anticipated costs to do that work. 
And again, that's something we'll, we'll bring back um, at, at a future date. Uh, one of the things that is not also reflected in your budget is uh, a revenue that we are anticipating to receive from Measure M, the uh, sales tax measure that support local parks. We are gonna bring back a plan uh, or a range of alternatives for council to consider the use of that revenue. Uh, and uh, based on your policy direction uh, on that, then that can then be incorporated in, into the budget uh, and may reflect how you want to uh, uh, prioritize that, that use of that revenue. Uh, last but not least, council during the budget workshop also talked about the desire to do some emergency preparedness planning. Um, we, staff certainly has some ideas uh, about what kind of uh, work program we could do around emergency preparedness planning uh, that, that was discussed at the work workshop, but council at the time decided to hold off on actually putting a dollar amount in the budget uh, subject to additional discussion on that matter. So there, right now there is no placeholder in the budget for that activity. Um, and just want to make sure that you're aware of that because that would be something we would be, be bringing back and if council decides they want to move forward with a work plan on that on emer for emergency preparedness, we'd obviously need to incorporate that into the budget. Um, one action the council took tonight on your consent agenda was the um, adoption or the acceptance of a report on your budget reserves. Uh, and really with the budget that's included in your uh, uh, doc, uh, in your packet does reflect uh, the, the council's fiscally pr prudent reserve policy. Um, as noted in the budget, the beginning fund, beginning fund balance for the general fund is uh, just about 3.4 million. Uh, you know, council should be really proud that you, you've, you've built up this fund balance and put the city in a strong position to have a strong reserve. Uh, you know, with that said, you know, it's just a cautionary note. Uh, it, that uh, the, uh, based on the, the, the action that you've taken with the reserve policy, about 2 million of that 3.4 million is in assigned and or committed reserves. So you've kind of said, hey, we, we really need to uh, uh, place this, you know, it's, 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 it's not an actual lockbox, but you've kind of said, hey, we wanna, we wanna set aside this money, we wanna commit it so that we're prepared for a number of other uh, activities that we know we're going to experience at some point in the future. Um, so that leaves about, you know, 1.4 million in, in uncommitted reserves uh, that we would anticipate over the next fiscal year. Did want to note that um, the budget's fairly conservative in terms of its revenue projections, but we really tried to look at it as closely as we could. For example, with sales tax, we use uh, our sales tax consultant, Muni Services, that helps us look at sales, check, sales tax projections for the next fiscal year. And we incorporate what they recommend as kind of the mid-level projection. We don't do the low, we don't do the high, we do the mid. Um, likewise, with sales tax revenue, which is also our, I mean, um, property tax revenue, which is also a significant uh, revenue source for the city, we, we use estimates provided by Sonoma County. And generally, those are, those are pretty good, uh, but you know, again, those are forecasts, uh, and, and those are things that we look at at mid-year and adjust accordingly, uh, but those are factored into the budget. And over the uh, fiscal year, we, we're projecting an increase of revenue of just about $50,000 uh, over projected actual for fiscal year 2018-19. So, you know, what I'm, what I'm showing is that we're, we're not expecting a huge increase in revenue over the current fiscal year. Um, however, anticipated expenditures for the fiscal year are up between uh, 800 and 800,000 <coughs> million dollars of the current projected year. Uh, so you can see we're in an environment where revenues are starting to flatten, but uh, expenditures because of cost increases uh, are, are increasing. What staff has prepared and including your packet for council's consideration um, are, are, are two budgets. Uh, at the budget workshop, council uh, provided some direction to look at uh, adding additional staff. Uh, and so we, we, we took that direction and we've, we've, we've provided a budget that doesn't add any staff to kind of give you a picture of where you are uh, from a financial perspective with, with no additional staff. But we've also um, uh, uh, 
added or provided a budget that reflects the cost of adding, you know, the three new positions that were discussed, you know, both during goal setting and during the budget workshop process. And there's really some key differences. Um, uh, during this, as part of this budget, we, we are uh, expecting to use uh, some of your fund balance to help balance the budget because uh, uh, otherwise uh, we, we would have an unbalanced budget <coughs> or required to bring forward a, a balanced budget. Um, the budget without the uh, additional staffing it would ultimately reduce the fund balance uh, about 365,000, leaving you with a fund balance of just a little over 3 million. Uh, whereas the the um, budget with the additional staff would decrease fund balance by about 500,000, um, and we re reduce the projected fund balance to about 2.9 million. Um, under uh, both scenarios, the the sewer and water enterprises are also expected to experience uh, operational deficits. In this year. 2019-20, um, and they are obviously larger uh, uh, under the budgets where we uh, uh, propose additional staffing. Uh, one of the things I do want to note that within your um, uh, sewer and water enterprises, one of the key drivers of that operational deficit is we are beginning to um, uh, start work on a number of critical either maintenance projects or capital improvement projects. Uh, and this is, is something that, uh, uh, you know, Kevin's going to touch on is, is that we're going to bring forward a capital improvement program. Uh, and that's something, again, that's not reflected in the budget. It's the cost of doing some of these really important CIPs to ensure that we're keeping pace with uh, uh, growth and development in our community. So um, that's... I, I wanted to touch on that uh, because we did include both of those budgets in, in your packet for your review and consideration. Uh, and at this time, you know, turn it over to, to turn it over to Kevin to talk about some of the details on some of the things I touched on, including the, the public works trailer. Uh, you know, one of the one of the big projects that we're proposing to fund within the budget, which is the, the infrastructure plan uh, for the southwest planning area as well as the CIP and, and, and maybe even uh, measure and sales tax revenue. Thanks, David. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Thompson, Assistant City Manager, Community Development Director. Um, as you know, we are looking for a new workspace for the public works team. Um, the, the current budget has a placeholder of $105,000, and that would be to replace the trailer, kind of like for like with what we have now. Uh, that would be paid for through a combination of corp yard impact fees and enterprise fees. There would be no general fund uh, requirement for that and I just want to say we're, we're going to bring back a more detailed analysis of our options and hopefully have some numbers and some uh, options for the council to consider uh, the other option uh, one of three options or two of two of three options is to uh, build out the CPAC uh, continue working on the front as was originally envisioned when the project was completed way back when um, and then we would assist the chamber in moving to the Chamber of Commerce over to the front here and we would then lease the chamber space um, for the use for by public works. Uh, a, a third option would be that we would lease downtown space in an existing office. Um, we have some preliminary estimates on that of about twelve hundred dollars a month, and that would be probably a, that would likely be a combination of general fund and enterprise fund. Uh, neither of these second options are reflected in the budget. Again, we're hoping to really you know start moving on this and bringing back the options with some. Some real numbers for you can really take a look at at what those are. Um, also, uh, David did mention the Southwest Planning Infrastructure Area. We did receive a second uh, bid quote uh, proposal. It's a little bit more money. We budgeted two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This one came in a little bit more, so we're probably looking at a cost estimate between two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand. It's a it's a big study. Uh, it's very important, we think, to the development of the area. We're you know, we, we need to have a better handle on what's going on down there, and we, we don't have, we're having, you know, it will help us condition projects and to really take a look at what a future assessment district could look like as well. So it's kind of the first step, and we've, we've talked about that quite a bit. Let's see, let's see here. David also mentioned we have a capital improvement program. It's fairly new from our consultant. We haven't really combed through everything in it yet. There are two projects in the current budget that are in that capital improvement program, which are the uh, 
SCADA for the wastewater treatment per, uh, plant. Also, a new uh, some design work for water replacement tanks at the Ritter site. Sorry, could you s repeat the first one? It's a SCADA system, which is a uh, it's a computerized radio system. David knows a lot more about it oh, than oh, I do. It's the, it's the, the, yeah, got it keep, helps them keep tabs on what's going on remotely. Right. It's very uh, common I in just, most, I most cities. I just had forgotten that was the term. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> real quick, just uh, what SCADA stands for is uh, Supervisor C Control and Data Acquisition. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, uh, it enables our, our staff to uh, uh, use a, uh, an application or, or the, computer to They'll be able to, to actually, remotely monitor the... Yes. Right, okay. remotely manage and, and operate the plant, and it would uh, be designed in such a way that if we change the plant to, say, tertiary treatment, it would continue to be a tool that would be able to, to use, and it, it's... it's a, it's important. Uh, it's a best practice, um, and it, it, it's just it's just an expensive endeavor. And we got to we 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 put a hundred thousand dollars in the budget to, to start that design work on this data system. Thank you. Um, again, I, the CIP program will be before the council in the next few months. There's a lot of projects in there. I think it's our first CIP program we've had in a while. Um, there's a lot of expensive projects, and again, those the only two that we've really looked at are these two that are very critical and time sensitive. So those are in the current budget. But once we uh, you know comb through the, the the CIP and bring it to the probably the Public Works subcommittee, we'll bring it forward to the council for consideration. Um, David did also mention the Measure uh, M funds for the parks. Uh, the only thing I really wanted to mention there is those funds are not budgeted. We are working on a few scenarios of how that money could be used for the council's consideration later. Uh, that really concludes our, our team presentation. There is a, a resolution for your consideration and, of course, questions and public comment. Thank you. If I can, Mayor, just to make one other note. Um, one of the other items that we touched on briefly during the budget workshop is, is the concept of co conducting uh, a council staff retreat for some strategic planning work. Uh, we never discussed that in depth. Uh, want to gauge your interest if uh, you're, you're inclined uh, that we would, we would amend uh, the, the preliminary draft budget to uh, include the cost of conducting that, that uh, that, that work effort, mm -hmm. uh, and that could be included in, in either the uh, the city council's budget or the city manager's budget, if, if, if you're so inclined. Kind of a, a rough number uh, to consider for that work work effort would be, you know, somewhere between say three three and five thousand dollars. We could uh, we could split the difference. Is that what you're thinking? No, I was telling them we better holster that yawn. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. All right. Just because we're talking about the budget. All right. <laughs> and, and, you know, in conclusion, uh, the the bu the budget's a, a, a comprehensive document. Mm -hmm. uh, Want to uh, applaud Susie for trying to continually make improvements in the budget document itself. Uh, obviously, now you can actually see the fund balances uh, for the impact fees. So that's something that uh, you know. I know before I had to kind of call and ask, "What's the? How much do we have?" Well, it's right in the budget document. It's going to be on the website once it's adopted. Uh, and it, it uh, obviously we will be uh, discussing that in more detail when um, we bring the capital improvement program forward or plan, uh, because often those projects. Uh, the, the impact fee revenue is the key funding source for CIPs. So, um, anyways, uh, you know, staff is is uh, in my recommendation uh, recommending adoption of the budget with without the additional personnel. Uh, and the reason being for that is because of the impact on the the fund balances. Uh, you know, but what I do want to say is that. We can certainly look very carefully at the need for staffing. We can bring forward at any time in the next fiscal year uh, a budget adjustment to uh, add staffing if, if council thinks that's prudent. Um, and we think that, that for example, uh, as Kevin mentioned, uh, Measure M, which is the parks funds, um, that is, uh, uh, there's, there, there's some discretion there in terms of how those uh, measure M funds can be used, and those could, those, for instance, can be used to uh, expand our our staffing to improve maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, and so, the, the you know, depending on 
what, what council's prerogative is on the use of those funds. We could bring forward uh, a, a plan to use those funds and staff, our council could decide that we, we add park staff uh, and fund it through measure and revenue. So um, I recognize uh, I, I'm putting the difficult situation to recommend uh, a consideration of a budget without additional staff because we're all working hard and we have a lot of work on our plate. Uh, but I'm also trying to make sure that we are um, bringing forward a prudent you know, uh, budget that is within our means. Well, geez, it doesn't look good, does it? You know, I mean, this uh, deficit without employee, without landing any new employees of 365000 for the general fund, that's only for one year. And I would imagine that's only going to compound itself. And if we continue at that loss rate, we'll really chew through that reserve pretty quickly. Um, so it's obvious, you know, not, not to be the stater of the obvious, but we need to find new revenue sources. And um, I like the idea of using the Measure M money uh, for possibly another parks employee, even if it's on a part-time basis. I think we discussed that earlier today. Um, I think that would be the way to go. Um, but, you know, I'm going to support version one with no employee increase. Um, and we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Mid-year rev budget review. Uh, we'll see where we're at at that point. So. Any questions or comments before I open yeah, it up, to, before I open okay. it up okay. to the public? I always dominate. Sorry. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Turner's going. Yeah. Go so, um, yeah, the, the, the writing's here in black and white. It's agenda packet for anybody who needed to see it you can see you can't get out of any of these options without operating at a loss with that being said I really like the idea of looking closely and and really deliberately at getting our park staff a little bit of help we just opened up an open space district um, I'm gonna go a little bit off the reservation here but I've already been made aware of, of individuals who have had instances out of the open space district evidently one member of our community fell at one point or another and uh, emergency services were deployed to help them now I have to believe when emergency services go out there to intervene for public safety it's kind of by any means necessary you know tearing the trail up a little bit if that was required to get the machine out there and and whatever efforts were made to get the person out and the people who walk that trail are going to expect cleanliness. They're going to expect it to be upkept. And I think what we've done as a community is we've been very vocal that we, we want the services done, but we don't want Roundup to do it. We want a natural resource or natural products to do that. We've heard testimony that that's going to increase the number of, of hours and, and potentially FTEs that's required to do weed abatement that was otherwise managed with only one pass. So it is, it is my opinion and my ask that we prioritize a park staff. And, and with that being said, I, I can't come along with the other two that were on there. I really need to look at the vitality of our town and city. And what I don't want to do is set us up for a circumstance that we spend more than we can now. And I know people that share this dais with me have been around when we have to then hack. And I mean really hack it down. And I want to make sure that we take deliberate steps to avoid that. But at the same time, I feel like we have introduced a lot more responsibility and surface area to the park staff. And we need to, in my opinion, prioritize getting some help in that regard. Other than that, I still stand by my recommendation that any final votes be moved until uh, Marta is able to join us. Thank you. Do you have any questions or about the budget or um, before I open it up to the public? No, I really don't um, have any specific questions, but I, I would like to say that I also agree that we can't afford those three people. But I definitely do stand behind the idea of um, trying to stop the ringing in my mm. ears. Um, You're not imagining it. No. <laughs> um, but beside that, I, I really know that if we even got a part-time um, parks maintenance person, that would at least give us uh, three pretty much full-time people, because we've got one half-time, right? And so I, I can't believe that these guys can keep up with that many employees with as much park as we have now, and now with the open space. You're, you're exactly right. 
So I think if we're going to fill any jobs, that we have to take care of what we've built before we hire more people. Okay. Well, with that, I'm going to just go ahead and open it up to the public. Would anyone like to come forward and uh, speak on this item? All right, well, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the council for further deliberation. Um, and I'll just add that um, I discussed this with the city manager, Kelly. I have a slightly different memory of what happened in our budget workshop. Um, I thought the direction was, that was um, I don't I think it, there was consensus for all three positions. Uh, there were strong, strong opinions on either side, but I have to say I, um, I do agree with uh, Council Member Turner is that just with the addition of the um, of the open space over over 200 acres um, when we are ready to spend that measure in money I mean I, I think that that would be a good use because we at the very least uh, need addition we need we need some help um, in the landscaping area so and then of course um, I completely agree with uh, Council Member Wilter is that we need to have other um, uh, sources of income in order to provide the service that um, uh, our residents expect and that we want to provide so but it has to be uh, um, a consistent and reliable um, uh, income source so that you know we're not hiring people and having to face layoffs like we did in, in 2000 2008 that just that's just not acceptable so you need to proceed with caution based on our financial realities and just add we're not the only city experiencing this all over California um, you know we're at the mercy of you know several factors and the main one being um, our pension obligations right now and so we're, we're about to ramp up to um, a very difficult period and it's going to stay that way for several years yep. um, yeah so that's it. that's what we're those are the realities that we're facing if I may um, you, sure. you brought up something that I, I felt I wanted to comment on a little bit further in, in the new revenue streams but what I'd also like to remind the community and, and my colleagues is we're not showing evidence that we're going to get into by any means necessary mode. Just this very evening, we passed a vote to reduce an encroachment fee for small businesses within town. So sometimes things appear to be low-hanging fruit where you can identify these revenue sources, but without overdoing a pun, at what cost? And the paying it forward of the encroachment fees to the clients we felt was too great of a cost to our community. So I hope um, some recognition, not to us, but as you come up with ideas and ultimately send them to us in emails, which I absolutely encourage outside the box thinking, um, we, we will do our best as a council to stay community minded with the, the fees and revenue sources that we may try and come up with. So thank you for bringing that up. Just one more thing, Madam Mayor. You know, I mentioned um, just a little while ago about without any new employees, we're looking at a um, um, our expenses outpacing our revenues by $365,000. If you fast forward a couple of years when our user utility tax uh, runs out, n now all of a sudden uh, that's $450,000 a year that we're not going to have in revenue. So we really need to start um, driving home the fact that we need some revenue enhancers. Vice Mayor, if I, if I can, or Mayor, uh, comment on that. Um, I, I, I think you're, you're absolutely right, Vice Mayor, and what we've uh, uh, planned to do is, and it's reflected in the budget, is uh, a fund an effort to uh, start doing some community polling around support for renewing um, that, that the utility user tax, uh, and I think it's key obviously to look at what our options are as a community and what's what the community would support uh, in terms of renewing that important revenue source because you're absolutely right if 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 that that uh, uh, measure is not renewed uh, we're looking at a, another uh, you know approximately four hundred fifty thousand dollar hit to our budget um, and that would certainly uh, impact the uh, the general fund and so that's that's something that we are planning for and we're it, you know it's a it's a one-time expense that we've reflected in the budget this year uh, so if we were to remove that for example it would make us a little bit better uh, sound in terms of our, our use of reserves um, but it's a, again we think it's a it's a, a, a prudent expenditure to help inform the council about what our options are around potential 
uh, the, uh, revenue measures. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm hearing general consensus, but also sentiment that um, we might want to continue this item. Yes. Um, to uh, and and Susie has something to add. <laughs> resolution um, if anything were to happen at the next meeting and we couldn't pass it we would only have one day to call a special meeting mm. and mm. and Pretty pass clear. it and also um, if we don't even if we do the continuation mm -hmm. we go back and we say we're gonna we're gonna spend the same as what we currently have budgeted but no capital projects can be completed. So if we're in the middle of any projects, nothing mm -hmm. can be paid and everything has to stop. And we'll be in the middle of summer projects. Yeah, so, that's so yeah. If, that's, yeah. if it would be my recommendation that you adopt one or the other and then do a budget amendment, come back knowing that we're gonna look at it again and do a budget amendment to correct what, whatever it is that you want to correct. Is it, it does, does our city attorney or city manager want to weigh in with, with uh, that direction, on that direction? And, and if I may, the, the way that I've normally done it is you bring back, just in case, at the next meeting, you would bring back the budget, but you would also include a resolution so you don't have to call a special meeting. You would bring a resolution as well, mm -hmm. doing a continuation resolution. That way you're basically still kind of living on your 18-19 on your budget for whatever period of time until you adopt your new budget. So I think we could definitely get the staff report and the item when it comes back at the next meeting mm -hmm. um, with that resolution just in case. But, I, but the, the comment is correct. Um, it still limits um, the spending of whatever is in that, the 18-19 uh, the the mm -hmm. fiscal year budget. But we'll have the resolution ready just in case. And what, is it? what construction projects would be um, going on where, that would be um, in jeopardy? I would imagine we have a few. We, we have to look at that carefully. Uh, one, one of the projects that actually we received positive news about today uh, is that it looks we, we were in jeopardy of uh, losing, losing funds, funding for our what we refer to as our Safe Routes to School project. Uh, but we received positive news that it, uh, that it looks like that the, the state is going to come through and fund that project. Uh, but we did, we do in the budget have uh, identified general fund uh, to uh, close the gap on the total project expense. So that might be an example of a project that might be affected. But we would need to look at that carefully uh, between now and then uh, so that we're prepared to really outline what projects might be affected. Again, I think the, the comment by the finance director is just is, is a cautionary note Maybe. that if we do continue, uh, obviously that's why we ex schedule the adoption tonight. Mm -hmm. So it gives you the flexibility mm -hmm. if you want to make changes. You know we can bring it back for adoption. The risk is we bring it back for adoption, and, and if 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 council adopts it, we're great. If mm -hmm. council then has additional significant efforts or wants to continue the budget discussion, then it puts us at risk, and we we would need to do a, a continuing resolution. Mm -hmm. That's your well, my opinion would be that um, if we were sitting here and it was a two-to-two -two vote, mm -hmm. and if we were really at odds, mm -hmm. then I would say definitely we should wait for MARTA. Mm -hmm. But it sounds to me like all four of us are in agreement. So it would be four to one even if MARTA did vote the other way. Yeah. Well, th thank you. Um, Madam Mayor, if we would go ahead and adopt this budget this evening, afford uh, Council Member Cruz the opportunity to sit down with the city manager or the finance director and go over it. And if she doesn't have any uh, changes that she'd like to see, it's done. If she does, then at the next meeting we can come back and adopt those changes. But I'm in favor of moving along with the vote tonight, just as a precautionary measure. I just simply respectfully disagree. I understand the risk. Um, one of the departments that got maybe an idea that we were gonna go one direction and we're looking at going another is not having the opportunity to, the head of that department is not having the opportunity to defend himself for, for, for uh, circumstances that were absolutely out of his control. Um, however, I am one 
of four, and this is democracy in action. Will I walk out of here mad as hell? No, I will not, but I just simply respectfully disagree. Thank you. Well, Madam Mayor, I go ahead and like, <laughs> I'd like to go ahead and uh, offer the resolution by title only City of Cloverdale City Council Resolution Number 442019, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Cloverdale adopting the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget. Are you indicating option one or option two? Option one. I'll second that. May we have a no. Vice Mayor Walter? Aye. Health Member Brigham? Aye. And Mayor Begg? Aye. Can I owe you a drink? <laughs> thank you. And I just want to thank, um, thank Susie and um, your team and city manager, assistant city manager, and uh, our uh, council for all of their hard work on this item. Um, it's not fun doing budgets, but there, there it is. It's at least it's, um, and and I'm sure that you know council member Cruz will will have an opportunity to uh, go over it and make any amendments um, and just and discuss any amendments that um, she calls to our attention. So I, th I think, Mayor, you're absolutely right, and, and, and that was the premise under which we wanted to bring it forward tonight. Is that. Um, <coughs> You really have to see the, the budget uh, as uh, an evolving document, and yep. Um, yep. you know it's 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 flexible enough to where, uh, uh, so long as it, it's in accordance with your policy, we can make adjustments and amendments as 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 needed. Um, so I, I, staff certainly understands Councilmember Turner's comments and desires to be inclusive, uh, but we also appreciate Council's direction tonight to approve the budget. And we will certainly work with Councilmember Cruz to identify if there's any uh, things that we, we may have missed in the budgetary process. May I ask a quick clarifying question? No, not to change the outcome, certainly. just to ask a clarifying question. With, with the motion that was just passed, does it still include the direction for Measure M funds to address a new parks employee? Uh, a a absolutely. I mean, staff uh, have had considerable correspondence with, uh, with Hector. Uh, about Measure M, and we're going to we're going to sit down and outline some alternatives for the council's mm -hmm. consideration, and be bringing that forward. Uh, I'd like to do that sooner rather than later. Uh, probably won't be ready for the uh, June 26th meeting, but uh, hopefully the, the July uh, 24th meeting, so we can really present those alternatives or range of alternatives for the council's consideration. We can and we can look at how the council wants to prioritize and spend those funds. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, item nine, consideration of resolution amending the city personnel system. Okay, thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Um, the, the item before you tonight is um, a resolution amending the city's uh, personnel system to modify and update you know, two position classifications. Uh, the two position classifications are the city clerk and um, the finance and human resource analyst position as well as to adjust the salary range of those existing classifications. You know, a little bit of background on, um, uh, on this proposed uh, amendment to the personnel system. Uh, in uh, March of this year, the, the council adopted an ordinance which vested authority with the city manager uh, to appoint uh, the uh, uh, office of Cloverdale city clerk. Uh, the ordinance was amended to reflect that the city clerk would no longer be an elected position, but rather would be an appointed position. The, the, the position um, of city clerk was previously undertaken by what was referred to as the deputy city clerk slash human resource technician. Um, and upon retirement of the incumbent from that position, um, it, was, it was determined that it was necessary to review and amend the, that classification. Um, our goal is to uh, recruit and uh, hopefully appoint a qualified city clerk to uh, fill an updated job classification that focuses on the duties of city clerk only. Uh, I, you know, a little bit of background, I think the, the, the previous job classification was uh, uh, 
a, a fairly significant undertaking for any one position because it included, uh, you know, a lot of HR duties, risk management duties, and city clerk duties all wrapped into one. So in the desire to move forward with a city clerk classification, we had to look closely at where where the, the kind of the human resource function would sit um, in, in close uh, communication with our staff. Uh, it was determined that um, the, it, we could amend the existing accountant analyst job classification to incorporate some additional uh, HR duties, primarily to assist the city manager with respect to uh, some of the key HR duties, not to, not to sit in the role of an HR director position, uh, but really function kind of as an analyst, be able to look at MOUs and cost those MOUs, uh, to uh, uh, you know, a, a assist me with with recruiting, um, and so what we've what we've done is incorporate some of the additional HR duties uh, into that classification. Uh, otherwise, haven't made any significant changes. Uh, and what you see in your packet are red lines versions of the two job classifications: one for city clerk and one for uh, this amended. Uh, finance and human resource analyst position that was the accountant analyst. I think one of the reasons to change the title is to kind of make it more reflective of what the duties are currently. Um, and what staff's asking tonight or requesting tonight, or uh, recommending tonight really, is um, that council adopt a resolution uh, supporting the, uh, re the, the change in the classification system. Uh, to amend the city's personnel system to update our position classifications for those two positions. Uh, at this time, I'm, I'm happy to entertain any questions that the uh, city council may have about those uh, proposed reclassifications. Any questions? Not me. Madam Mayor, I already talked to the city manager about this um, over the last couple of days. I'm, I'm fine with it. I just had one minor question. I see that um, on page 562, the bullet point serves on city safety committee is uh, is uh, has been removed. Is that because we don't have a safety committee? Yeah, when we looked at this, uh, I know I looked at this with our, our interim city clerk, Maria McArthur, mm -hmm. and we, we did not see a reference to a city safety committee. I think it might have been uh, uh, old hangover, right. uh, but if it's not, you know, we, we all uh, subscribe to safe practices and uh, I think it would be uh, still well within our authority mm -hmm. to uh, have a, a staff member serve on that committee if, 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 it, if, it, still exists. if it still exists. I guess my, my only comment was um, that during the, um, during the fires and Linda was, re was responsible for grabbing all of the um, the boxes to take to the EOC, and it was her observation at the time that you know all the pens were dry. Um, <laughs> they were not, so I would just would imagine that you know whether Maria is still here or we um, have um, found our new city clerk, that we um, make sure that that person is an integral part of of making sure that that all of that equipment is up to date when we when we do go to you know look at our emergency preparedness because. Um, yeah, we definitely um, were lacking on that when uh, we all showed up to the, uh, when everyone showed up to the fire department, so. <laughs> a absolutely, I think that's something, uh, as a city manager, I really need to take note of. We need to uh, take a kind of a fresh look mm -hmm. at our emergency operations center mm -hmm. and uh, uh, address the need for uh, really a comprehensive update. Right. Uh, I know we were kind of relying in part uh, on the county, but uh, we also need to, to undertake our own effort mm -hmm. to uh, update all the manuals uh, uh, and the contact information and really the processes and you know, phone books, pens, etc. cetera, right. uh, and, and technology yeah. as well. Yeah, the, so yeah the, the, just the clerk is just an integral part of, of, make, of, of setting up and making sure that we're all operational when, once we get there. So right. just wanted to make sure that, that that's on that that's on our radar. So with that, I'll go ahead and... I have um, one question. Sorry, oh, it certainly. snuck up on me. I, I had told you no. Yep. Um, if, if I'm missing it because it's jumping right out at me, please forgive me. But what for the, the financial analyst slash uh, HR... I think it was called mm -hmm. technician. 
what's, what's the what report? Page, what page are you on? Uh, or if, you, if you're going to reference something, sorry. I'm not, let me see. Let me see if I know what page I'm on here. Oh, and if you're not, if you don't have a specific page, just, yes, go on. Just. I think it's right. If I, if I can anticipate your question, Council Member Turner. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I don't need a page number, forgive me. So, the, the reporting structure for the financial analyst who will also have jo shared job duties to assist with HR, what will the reporting structure look like for who that individual reports up to? Will one person assume the uh, supervisory role of both of those disciplines, or will that be separated out between two senior staff? Sure, no, that's a, good, that's a great question, Council Member Turner, and that, that's um, specified on uh, page number 564 of your agenda packet under supervision received slash exercise. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It, thank uh, you. The, the, it does note that um, it would receive the direction from the finance director. For, for both of those disciplines within that job role? Uh, that is that is correct. That's uh, how it states. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say that um, uh, the city manager will continue to oversee uh, human resources, um, and there's direction. But again, the the role that is being played by this the, by by the incumbent in this position is an assistant role. It's not a you know it's not a director position. So they don't they wouldn't report. Uh, directly to me they'd still continue to report to the to the um, to the finance director thank you okay great. well at this time I'll go ahead and open it up to the public if there are any questions please come to the front all right seeing none I will bring it back to uh, uh, the dais and did, um, Susie did you have anything to that you wanted to add on this mm -hmm. okay great any further questions or no all right madam mayor i'd like to offer a resolution by title only city of cloverdale city council resolution number 45-2019 a resolution of the city council of the city of cloverdale amending the city personnel system to update the city clerk and finance and human resources analyst classifications second right. aye Aye. And Aye. Thank you. All right. We're going to move on to item 10, consideration of possible action to declare all weeds growing within the city to be a public nuisance and declaring the city's intention to remove and abate the same upon specified private properties under and in accordance with the provisions of the City of Cloverdale Municipal Code, Chapter 8.16. Who would like to take this? I will, thank you. Mayor, council members, uh, this item is a, a resolution declaring, it probably should be clarified to say, weeds growing on certain private properties in town as a public nuisance, and declaring the city's intent to remove and abate weeds and set a date for a hearing for anyone objecting to that. Um, every year the fire district, oh by the way, the, the fire district letter came, came in today and you can see the, the list of properties there. Um, every year the fire district identifies properties where hazardous weeds are growing. They do give them a chance to take care of the weeds. Um, after follow-up inspections, these five properties have still not taken care of the weeds. And so this uh, resolution sets up a process for a hearing. Uh, ultimately, the city will, can go in and cut the weeds ourselves and, and bill the property owner. Uh, the resolution sets a hearing for, what is it, July? The, the 24th. July 24th. So it would be our hope that the property owners would be able to take care of it before July 24th. If not, yeah, with this resolution, we'll be able to uh, take care of it ourselves and build them. So again, our recommendation is to adopt the attached resolution declaring weeds growing on certain private properties in the city, a public nuisance, and declaring the city's intent to remove the weeds and set a hearing for anyone wishing to object. Great. That's that's the conclusion of my report. Okay. I just have a quick question. Sure. Are any of the properties on the letter um, behind Port Port Lane or Port Circle? I don't believe they are. No. No. My initial glance of the properties, because uh, the, no. the, the the property behind Port Circle is all in the county. Is that county land? Yeah, okay, that's, what I, names, that's what so. I thought. Okay, I just wanted to connect the dots. All right, so any questions or comments? Or? Just a comment. I, I think this stays in line with us making 
uh, calculated, um, not always grand, but calculated efforts to remain as fire conscious as we can. Mm -hmm. We do this every year. Right. Any questions? Well, at this time, I'll open it up to public comment. Would anyone from the public like to come forward and uh, address this issue? All right. Well, seeing none, I'll bring it back up to the dais. Um, any Nothing further for me. deliberations? All right. Would someone like to? Um, sure. Offer the resolution. Yes. Okay, City of Cloverdale City Council Resolution Number 46, 2019, Resolution of the City Council of the City of Cloverdale declaring all weeds growing within the city to be a public nuisance and declaring its intention to remove and abate the same upon specified private properties under and in accordance with the provisions of the City of Cloverdale Municipal Code Chapter 8.16 entitled Weed Abatement. I will second. Aye. Aye. And uh, Councilmember Brigham? Aye. And Mayor Bay. Aye. Great. All right, moving on to item 11, Sonoma County Mayors and Council Members Association Board of Directors pending appointments. The fun never ends. <laughs> Until it does. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. This, this year seems like it's been really full of uh, considering appointments uh, from the mayors. It's been rich. It's been rich. It's been, it's been rich with uh, opportunities. Yes. The, the the next meeting of the mayor and council members uh, association board of directors is is scheduled tomorrow, uh, June thirteenth, in Runner Park. Uh, there are currently uh, four positions that are open for uh, filling and are seeking recommendations from the uh, mayor and council members board. That includes the ABAG executive board. Uh, the ABAG Executive Board Alternate, uh, the Sonoma County Ag Preservation Open Space District Advisory Committee, and the ABAG Regional Planning Committee. Uh, in response to uh, the solicitation for interested uh, council members to serve on those boards, uh, there were two letters received, one by uh, Mayor Pitati, John Del Oso, to serve on the Sonoma County Ag Preservation Open Space District Advisory Committee, and a a uh, letter of interest from uh, Rona Park City Council Member Susan Adams to serve on the ABAG Regional Planning Committee. Uh, there was no letters of interest received to, to uh, serve on the ABAG Executive Board uh, or as an alternate that were vacated by uh, Rona Park Council Member McKenzie and uh, Santa Rosa Council Member Combs. Uh, what, council, what staff is recommending is that the, the council review the letters and provide direction to your mayor for voting um, at, uh, for your voting preference at the board of directors meeting tomorrow. Great. Any discussion? It's pretty simple. Okay. There's nobody that wants the first two, and you got two on the second one, one each. So let's open it up to public comment because someone may want to come forward. <laughs> Would anyone from the public like to come <laughs> forward so. and, and comment on this item? Seeing likely none, we'll just bring it back to the dais and uh, and. Any further? Any further? Council members, I'd, <laughs> council members, I'd like to recommend that we uh, give Mayor Bagby uh, her discretion to vote at the table as she sees fit. I've had it. Yep, <laughs> sounds good to me. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Do we need any anything further than that? Do we need to take a vote? Okay, great. All right, then we will be moving hey, on. Hey, hey. You're not done yet. I'm not done. No, no, I'm done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Subcommittee items, or yeah, any, any subcommittee items that we need to be aware of. Okay, great, moving on to subcommittee reports. Um, the airport does meet in October 1st, but I believe we have set up a special meeting in, in August as well, so we'll, um, we'll keep you posted on that. And then finance, administration, and police, the next meeting is uh, June 27th. Uh, planning and community development, next meeting will be Tuesday, June the 18th at 4 p.m. City Hall. Public Works will meet on July the 23rd, 2019 at 4 p.m. Uh, just a small update, we did meet uh, with a special meeting. It was last Tuesday the 26th, if my memory serves me correctly. And uh, I think all in all, we had a very positive meeting, gave some direction to staff, which you heard little details about earlier, and we will have more details as they become available. And I joint, but since, um, but these are both marches, right? The joint city fire and school districts. Yeah, uh, Mayor, if I may, just a quick update on the Oops, uh, joint city school district subcommittee. Mm -hmm. 
uh, at the at the previous meeting, the subcommittee uh, considered uh, app uh, one app application for the student liaison position, um, and because only one application was received, the subcommittee recommended you know it kind of opening up and extending the application period. Uh, we received three additional applications uh, for student liaison, and we'll be bringing that forward at the next next subcommittee. So that's that's exciting. Uh, hopefully, they'll provide the opportunity to have uh, two student liaisons uh, if the subcommittee so recommends. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, council reports. None. I've submitted mine in writing. Legislative report. Mayor, I did have a, a brief legislative report. There's a letter uh, on the dais. Uh, it's a, a letter of opposition or notice of opposition to SB 330, uh, sponsored by uh, Senator Skinner, uh, referred to as the Housing Crisis Act of 2019. The draft letter uh, uh, opposes the, uh, the legislation uh, because of its impacts on the city of Cloverdale, uh, specifically it includes provisions of uh, you know, basically prohibiting local, local agencies from imposing any type of parking standard within a quarter mile of uh, rail stops. Um, and it also creates a new type of housing project application that could enable developers to uh, basically submit a, an incomplete uh, application. And then last but not least, it freezes impact fees. Um, and so therefore, the, for those reasons, uh, uh, staff recommends that the, the letter of opposition be put in the record and, and that the, uh, it's, it's ready for the mayor's signature. It's just the Anyone strongly opposed to this? Okay. I think it's good. No, but I'd be, I'd be curious. I see that we copied uh, uh, Senator McGuire, uh, Assembly Member Woods. Uh, how are they feeling on this particular issue? Do we know? I, I, I don't know if okay. either of them have issued uh, a position on this legislation. Uh, I know that Senator McGuire uh, worked very, very hard on the um, the Senator Senator Weiner's bill, which was struck down to um, just kind of smooth out some of these um, requirements. And so I, I can't imagine that, that he would be completely in favor of it. So we'll see. Parts of it he would. Parts of it he would. Yeah. Parts, parts of it he would. But, but parts, parts of it, it he wouldn't. Would. Yeah, he was very concerned about its effect on um, the more rural areas So yep. and uh, some local control. And I will say that um, the, the, the League of Cities or the Redwood Division also came out um, as an opposed on this item. So. Okay. so with everyone's permission, I'll go ahead and sign it if you're yep. good with that. Sounds okay. good to me. Great. All right. And so is that it for the legislative report? That's pretty much here. it. Okay. And city manager, city attorney reports. Uh, Mayor, just a quick report um, on uh, we, the, the city manager and I are working and we'll be working with the mayor on scheduling our uh, performance evaluations. It's that time of the year. Um, in order for us to kind of put that on closed session for performance evaluation, it's a good practice to do it once a year. Um, so we are, we'll be working on that date. So we'll have we'll have a uh, it'll it'll happen soon. Okay. I wonder if uh, it's uh, any benefit in, in concerting it with the concept of the uh, retreat. Yes. What what are the, what are the uh, proposed dates in re in relation to the um, executive retreat? Well, we'll we'll take a we're we're working on that. We're looking at calendars. I know staff's been pretty pretty busy uh, okay. right now with the budget and getting the, all these things ready. But we'll be looking at those dates as well. I know that uh, the evaluations happen in, in, uh, in closed session, mm -hmm. while a retreat, a more formal retreat with the council involved would be an open session. Agreed. Um, I, I, to, just to clarify my comment, and we don't have to go any further with this, uh, to have the review before would be my idea of working it in concert. One more time? To have the evaluation prior to the retreat would be my uh, recommendation if, if I can. And that is the game plan. Thank okay. you. Okay. Sure. Okay. Council direction on future agenda items. Well, seeing none, I believe we are going to adjourn to a regular meeting of the City Council on uh, Wednesday, the 26th, closed session at 5 p.m. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good.